What's up guys? Today I have another Ethereum video for you guys, highly requested. And today I'm going to go through contract interactions. That is how smart contracts in Ethereum can interact with each other and call functions in other contracts. And this is important to understand because it's an important part of decentralized programming that contracts can interact with each other. So I hope you'll enjoy it. With that being said, let's get into the code. All right, guys. Once again, we're going to use uh, the Remix online uh, editor and compiler here. And once you get here, we're going to create a new file. And we're going to have two files in this project. One that's called call, let's see, call e. Go ahead and create that. And then one that is called caller. And you can probably figure out which one does what. The caller contract calls the call e contract, of course. So we're going to start off with the call e contract. And this is going to be a simple one. First, I want to define the version of Solidity, like you know this already. 0 0.4.0. And then we create a new contract called call e. See if I can spell it right. And then we need a uh, just a simple integer here called value, which is going to be public, which is the value that we're going to interact with from the other contract. And we also need a getter and a setter for this value. And you know how to create this by now. Uh, we get value, and it returns an integer, an unsigned integer, and return value like so. And then we need the get value as well. Oh, sorry, we need the set value. Set value, and it takes a parameter, an integer, new value, and with that, we set value equal new value. And that's actually all we need for this simple call e contract. And we're gonna get back to this contract and create this contract and publish it later. But for now, we're gonna go to the caller contract. We're gonna start off in the same way, of course, with pragma solidity. And then contract caller. Oh, sorry. And here we're gonna have two functions as well, but they're gonna be focused on calling the functions in the other contract. So function get call e value. And in here we're gonna need to take an address, and uh, the address to the other contract. So we need an address input here and it's going to return the integer from the other contract so an unsigned integer and in here then we create the actual uh, call the object if you will so if you're familiar with object oriented programming this is no nothing new uh, create a new call the object and we get that from calling Kali with the actual address. Then we'll get a value that we can interact with the other contract from. And then we can just go return C dot get value. Sorry. Get value. And this function is of course the function from here. And then we can do the other function that's called set Kali value. You can of course name them whatever you want, but this is my naming scheme of today. And here we'll also need the address to the contract. And we will also want a new value that we're gonna set the value to. So we need to take in an integer, new value as a parameter, and it is also going to return an unsigned integer. And in here we do the same procedure. We need to create the actual call e uh, object here. That is a reference to the other contract. And now we're going to do c.set value instead with the new value that we had as a parameter. 
and then we can just return c.get value to see the current value and of course this set value function is the set value function from here and you see now that we got some errors here identifier not found or not unique and it points to call e and the same thing here and that's because we need what's called an interface here in order for this contract to know what the call e contract actually actually looks like and we write these interfaces uh, as a contract uh, but without specifying what's in the actual functions so we're going to do contract call e here which is the same name as the other contract and in here we're going to write how the functions actually look like what they take as parameters and what they return so that the caller contract knows what functions there is and how we can interact with them so we need to write all of the functions that we had in the call e contract here uh, we need to write the same functions in here but just the first line of them like that so now the contract above can see what's the name of the function in the call e contract does it need any parameters and what does it return and we'll do the same thing for the set value function and here of course we have parameter called value and it doesn't return anything so if you would, were to add more functionality into this call e contract more functions in here you would need to add them here as well if you want to be able to interact with them from this contract and when we're done with this we can go ahead and create the contract so let's start off with the call e contract we create that and then you might have to switch in this list here so we're going to create the caller contract so we have both of them and now these are published to a uh, to a fictional address you know it's not a real address on the blockchain but we have an address where we can interact with this contract just like you know it's, it's a simulation of how it would be when the contract is in the real blockchain so we can copy this address by clicking here and we we need that as a parameter to our caller functions so we'll put it in quotation marks and then we can call the get call e value and we can see here that the output is zero so return zero and that is of course true because we didn't initiate the value to anything else and then it will default to zero and the same will of course be true if we use the value function from the call e contract itself that would also be zero so now we try to set the value by inputting the address of the call e contract and then comma the value we want to set it to let's set it to 100 and then we can check in the call e contract first and see that yeah it has changed to 100 from this contract and then we can of course also use the get call e value here and uh, see the value from the caller contract and we can see here that it's also 100 we can try to change it again let's see to 1000 let's set it to 2000 and let's try to get it again and it is 2000 great so it works and just to recap we have the call e contract where the value is actually stored nothing is stored in the caller contract we're just interacting from the caller contract creating this call e reference and calling the functions in this contract and returning the values back to this contract and returning them out to the user and this is known as an interface which is needed so that this contract can know the structure of the functions in the call e contract all right guys that was it thank you very much for watching this video on contract interaction and if you like the video please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any suggestions for future videos or comments please leave them in the comment section and i'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video bye guys